not about the money for me. That's not why I came. Are you college. giving up any money? Congressman, my uh, board will conduct a comprehensive review. That's so you're saying you're not giving up any compensation at all. You're continuing to work and make $30 million a year after this horrific two accidents that caused all these people's relatives to go, to disappear, to die. That was Congressman Steve Cohen confronting Boeing CEO Dennis Mullenberg about his pay since the crashes of two MAX planes. Those accidents killed 346 people. Mullenberg told the House committee that he and the company are accountable. We can and must do better. We've been challenged and changed by these accidents. We've made mistakes and we've learned and we are still learning and we're improving. Family members have called for Mullenberg to resign. During today's hearing, Washington Congressman uh, Rick Larson said that the FAA needs to fix its process for evaluating aircraft. King Fest Glenn Farley is live tonight in Washington, D.C. and joins us with more on what Congressman Larson had to say. Glenn. Well, Greg, I had a chance to sit down with Congressman Larson. We went in depth with him about this business involving the FAA, and there's a lot more to come. Those are constant reminders of the importance of this committee's work and what is at stake if we do not address systemic safety issues in U.S. aviation today. In the U.S. House of Representatives, Washington Democrat Rick Larson heads the Aviation Subcommittee. After all, Boeing's giant Everett plant is in his district. His concern back home is that Boeing's troubles over the 737 MAX following those two crashes could hurt jobs in our state. Corporate headquarters wasn't stepping up soon enough to take responsibility and to try to get things fixed. Um, I think that's changed a lot, but I also think still that uh, these women and men uh, who work at Boeing uh, feel under siege a little bit um, uh, because we, we don't have all the answers yet. Well, they're probably not going to feel better as a result of the last two days here. Uh, I, I think there's another way to look at that, and that's finally we're starting to peel away the onion on, onion on how, this, how these decisions got made. Um, uh, both between uh, um, uh, looking at the FAA and at Boeing. We made some mistakes. The hearing in the House and the one the day before in the U.S. Senate, the first time Boeing CEO Dennis Mullenberg came before Congress in the wake of the crashes. The Federal Aviation Administration, which performed the certification oversight on the 737 MAX and what turned out to be the flawed design of the MCAS system, We'll be hauled up to the hill next. I think we have maybe we have a system that is designed to um, uh, design and develop mechanical airplanes. When in fact, airplanes these days are much more software-based. It's hiring the people at the FAA who are thinking ahead of what it will take to design uh, and develop and then certify airplanes. 346 people died in, in two Boeing MAX crashes, and it shouldn't have happened. Uh, Congress needs to keep those folks uh, in mind as we move forward, and I think we can make a safer FAA. Now, of course, it will be up to the FAA to sign off on the lifting of the grounding, which Boeing still thinks can get done. That may happen here over the next couple of months. But in terms of what is happening up here on Capitol Hill, there are more investigations that are already in the pipeline. And all that may continue for some time to come. Live in Washington, D.C., Glenn Farley, King 5 News. So, Glenn, the plane's grounded, but once it is cleared to fly again, is there a discussion about whether people are going to get back on this airplane? Well, there's been a lot of discussion. Does the MAX have to be rebranded to something else even after these fixes are made? Obviously, if you ask one of the family members, multiple family members, they say this plane should never fly again. Uh, a couple we interviewed last night have buttons that say ax the MAX. Uh, one of the other members of this committee uh, from Missouri, who is also a pilot, says he'll be the first one on there. He thinks it should go, but once those fixes are made, clearly some very divided opinions on what to do next. But then the regular passenger is going to be sort of in between there someplace and people will make different calls. All right, King 5's Glenn Farley live tonight for us in Washington, D.C. Glenn, thank you. The news coming out of the nation's capital is being watched very intensely here at home. Now, one Boeing worker in particular reached out to us and sent an open letter of sorts to King 5 News. Eric Wilkinson reports on this.
It's important to point out this is the opinion of one worker, an analyst on the 777 line here in Everett, who certainly does not speak for the entire workforce. That worker says the main point is to not lose sight of those 346 victims here and that the Boeing workers think about them every day. The main frustration is with corporate leadership and a lack of communication with the workforce. Here's one quote. This past year has been a roller coaster of emotions, and it has been difficult when I go home to see my family and see my friends out in social settings. They always bring up the Boeing company and want to know the status of everything going on with the 737. Time after time, it's always, I don't know, or we will see. We worry for our Renton counterparts and 737 program because are there layoffs coming? How will these investigations affect other programs? It has been a long year with not many answers, and we will continue to do our job at an exceptional level. And this worker goes on to say that at the end of the day, there is still great faith in the Boeing company. At the Boeing plant in Everett, Eric Wilkinson, King 5 News.